I watched my first video and uh, I noticed the sound was not as good as it could be. Uh, I hope I can improve as I go along and make a, a product that uh, is uh, reasonable uh, with enough quality to, to make the point. So uh, the first one I talked about why I became a carpenter and some of those things. Uh, <clears throat> so today I'd like to start with saying, where do we start? So basically here's where we start. This is a set of blueprints, not really blueprints, they're architectural drawings, they're working drawings. I just call them the funny papers. Now some people see how many pages are here and uh, they get a little bit, uh, uh, have a little anxiety about the difficulty involved, but they're all simple. All you have to do is learn a few sim symbols, what things represent on here. Uh, a much simpler version of the working drawing is here. This is uh, my, one of my latest projects. Uh, since I retired, uh, I became involved with Habitat for Humanity. And uh, I volunteered for the first few years and uh, then uh, they uh, had a need for a construction coordinator, so they hired me. So I've been in that position for a little over two years. And my job now is to make these drawings to take to the city to get the uh, building permit and to uh, oversee the building of these projects. So this project here, here's how it started, an empty lot. And this is pretty much how every project starts. Now, with these drawings uh, made by an engineer, engineers don't work the same as carpenters. Car engineers use feet, tenths, and one hundredths. We carpenters use feet, inches, eighths, and down to a sixteenth of an inch. So, uh, as far as I can see, our first problem as a carpenter with a set of working drawings is to interpret or to transpose those tenths and feet into inches and sixteenths. I have an illustration drawn here on the board. A simple way to convert these things. One inch, one foot equals 96 one eighth of an inch. One foot equals 100 one hundredths of a foot. So therefore, one eighth of an inch is very close to being one one hundredth. So if you have an inch, you would have 0 0.08. That would be 0 0.08. Now, as we go along, there are exacts. Three inches is exactly 0.25 feet. Six inches is exactly 0 0.50 feet. Nine inches is exactly 0 0.75 feet. So uh, instead of adding to the, this is uh, actually 0 0.08333. Uh, so instead of adding another 0 0.08 and make it 0 0.16, I would subtract 0 0.08 from the 0.25, which would make it 0.17. It is actually 0.16777, okay? And therefore, you could go through the whole foot. Uh, say we had uh, three and five eighths inches. You would take your 0.25, and at 5 eighths, you'd add another 5. That would be 0.30 feet. Okay, now to kind of uh, to kind of pan that out, let's take, uh, for example, let's take 3 and 5 eighths inches and convert it to tenths and hundredths. Okay, 3 and 5 eighths inches. Okay, you would divide the... The uh, five by the eight, so eight into 
five will be point, let's see, six eighths or 48. Eight into that would be uh, two, two times eight, 16. Point six two five. So we would have three point six two five uh, inches. Now we divide that by twelve to get one hundredths. Okay, twelve into three point six two five. Twelve into thirty six is six. Okay, thirty six. Uh, no, that's not right. It's three, isn't it? Three times 12 is 36. Okay, then you bring down your two, and it's zero. Two five would be 0 .302. Okay, that's close enough when we're talking about changing it back and forth. Um, now, to look back at our drawing, I'm going to erase this so I can do another little illustration here. This particular drawing uh, has the uh, lot line is a solid with two dashes, a solid with two dashes, a solid with two dashes. That is your lot line. And this has a coordinate uh, north it's marked north 1.0 something out this way and it's given like 395 feet along this uh, particular uh, lot line now within this lot line there is some little curvy lines and they have some numbers written on them. This one was 0.91. This one was 0.92. And 93. And so forth. These were what you call contour lines. So if you look at the drawing, it's not too hard to figure out what these mean. And, that each one of these is a different foot. There's a foot difference in elevation on each one of these lines. <clears throat> so generally you're given, uh, your, your a building is put on this and there's a finished floor elevation Okay, so you have to establish the grade for this floor. In relation to the surveyor's monument will be sometimes on a corner. I know uh, when I started to work for Habitat two years ago, the first house that I was given, I was given an elevation on the top of a manhole cover. And that manhole cover, I had to translate this height of the manhole cover to my finished floor. So uh, manhole covers down here. My finished floor is up here. Okay, I've got a finished grade here somewhere. So in addition to changing my feet and inches into tens and hundreds, I've got to change this elevation onto something that I can establish this finished floor. Okay. The way I do that is completely old fashioned. Um, all that's done pretty much anymore by GPS. Back in the day when I was involved in this kind of stuff, this is what I use. This is a builder's transit. With this builder's transit, I can establish lines and I can establish grade. So, uh, As I talk about the grade to establish, uh, I would set my interest instrument up 
that that's the illustration of my instrument okay now I would have a rod sitting on top of this was my manhole cover and the elevation that I was given on that okay I keep a little pad of paper when I do my elevations and this thing shoots a level line over to here so I would read it and say I read five feet three inches okay and I'm given a elevation of 97 feet here that's actually just a made-up number so now I would take my elevation 97 feet and I would add my five foot three inches so I would write in my book this first shot nine and five that'd be one oh two and three inches so this would be one oh two feet three inches I would call that my HI height of instrument now to establish my grade I would drive a stake over here and uh, I would subtract say uh, I wanted a 100 elevation on my finished floor I would subtract 100 from here I would get three two so when I have my rod my stake driven in the ground I would bring it up till till I read two foot and three inches on my rod bring it up when when I'm shooting that I would mark on my stake that is my finished floor okay and I think that uh, I need to uh, illustrate that a little more perfectly. Uh, grade is one of the first things you establish because when you lay out your building corners, I try to get them as close as I can to uh, level because if I don't have them level, if, if uh, say I'm measuring 50 feet across here and I'm out of level this line would be longer than the level line so uh, everything has to be correct you can't have uh, you can't square things up if you're if your measurements are off you're not square so uh, I like to hold my uh, video to about 15 minutes so uh, I'll go into that a little bit more in some coming video. I'll be more specific and uh, maybe present a better idea. Thank you.